India is a mobile first nation, but we have really no idea when it comes to mobile security. We see pop-ups on various websites and we click on them and we don't know why we did that. We have apps that we should not download. We download APKs that can affect mobile security. But who's the best person to tell you about that? Well, there are a lot of them, but we are going to take you to one of the best in the business. We are going to talk to Sergey Novikov from the Kaspersky Research Labs. We are here with Sergey Novikov. He's the Deputy Director of Research in the Kaspersky Labs. Uh, so we're going to ask him a few questions about mobile security and why you should really care. And he's going to try and uh, explain it to you because he's, of course, better at explaining the, those things than we are. So I'll just get right to the point. So Sergey, my first question to you is, of course, about mobile security and what are the things that people should actually uh, know about and should really keep a lookout for? Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you very much for your important question, in my opinion. Why it is important? First of all, and this is like really interesting fact that the number of devices, the number of uh, smartphones, uh, mobile devices in India is like rapidly grow very grow very fast uh, I think it's even faster than like some other countries in the region or even like globally uh, those devices are affordable not very expensive people can easily buy them maybe again the situation uh, can happen when like those guys never ever used like PC but they already have uh, their own smartphone and again uh, the problem from our perspective is that um, people do not care uh, people, there is the security awareness level or any kind of awareness level using all those new devices and gadgets is like below the, below the, the appropriate level. And uh, that, that's one of the problems. Another one is like, again, education and knowledge and experience of uh, like dealing with such kind of uh, gadgets. They all like it, of course. They all know how to use it. But in terms of the risks of the like potential problems, they do not care. And again, another perception here, just again, for, for your understanding, is that people more or less, from majority perspective, they know and they like familiar that they need to protect their PCs, their laptops, desktops. It's like a standard that if you have like a Windows operation system on your laptop, you need to have an antivirus or in any kind of security solution. Unfortunately, with the smartphones and gadgets, it's absolutely opposite story. So people absolutely do not care. And if I bought the device for, I don't know, not that expensive, I don't know, 100 US dollars, or I don't know, why should I care about any kind of security application or AV solution on my, on my device? And that, that is a problem. On the other hand, uh, the number of uh, mobile threats, the number of uh, real pieces of malware for mobile devices is also hugely increasing because Android is an open platform. A lot of like developers of any kind of applications, not only like official uh, developers, but like third parties as well. And it's not very um, like difficult to develop an application or any kind of uploaded to any kind of even official uh, Google market or some kind of third parties markets of applications. And it, like the number of applications is like huge. Uh, <clears throat> which again means that all this is available for, for the users. What can be the problems? Honestly, all those threats, all those malware for Android is absolutely similar to what we already seen on PCs. It can be Trojans, it can be uh, like Trojans st which steal your information, confidential private information. And sometimes, I don't know whether you agree with me or not, we have much more confidential private personal stuff on our smartphones than on our PCs. Some photos, sometimes documents, Sometimes it's uh, pins for our credit cards, passwords, I don't know, geolocation, and so on and so forth. A lot of sensitive stuff. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, also, we are more often doing online transactions from our smartphones, buying something, doing online banking, whatsoever. So it also can be a problem. So those Trojans, th those threats, they're stealing information, one. Two, they can organize some kind of... Uh, 
zombie networks, we call it, the botnets uh, of infected devices, which can then do DDoS attacks, sending spam, uh, sending other malware to other devices, and so on, many capabilities. Uh, then uh, another interesting thing is uh, um, Trojans uh, who are sending SMS messages to short premium numbers, which are like much more expensive. And again, the users of those, de of those devices, they are absolutely do not know that it's happening before they see the bills from their telecom company. Uh, last but not least, uh, we see more often the ransomware, which is again works on uh, smartphones. Again, uh, block the access to it, encrypt information, and then ask you to pay them some money to make like decryption of all those data. So different variety of capabilities, uh, once again similar to PCs, and uh, again people do not care, unfortunately. Uh, that's that's the, the main issue today. So between, like you said, you know, there are a variety of uh, number of malware out there. But with any kind of smartphone, the one thing that remains is you personally have to click on install or OK for any application to install itself, right? It can't just install itself through something. So how exactly does a person know? Does downloading from the iOS store or the Play Store ensure that this is a this application is completely safe. How exactly does a person know what to install, what not to install, when something wrong is happening? Sorry. Um, in many cases, unfortunately, person do not know, does not know. And uh, the problem here is, again, we trust to everything. And we have, when we see any kind of interesting application for us, even like open, quite often for free, uh, we download it and that's it. And uh, then we even do not know what is happening on our device. Because again, the tactics, the strategy of cyber criminals, they're trying to hide themselves. Even if it's some, some kind of a nice application, I don't know, flashlight or whatever, it can do many different things. Even including its own capability, like flashlighting, for example. So for a simple user, it's really complicated to analyze, to identify whether it strange and malicious application or not. Uh, so to give here an advice is quite complicated. It's as always like if we're like moving to different kind of advices, uh, number one is uh, what we re do recommend is to have any kind of security application, AV application on your device. This is one. Number two, um, download uh, applications only from trusted sources only from official stores, nowhere else. Even if it's like pay, you need to pay for it, that means you need to pay for it. Don't try to find it for free. Um, in many cases, by the way, in many cases, when it's like uh, freemium applications and there's like a advertisements inside of it, you can like accidentally or by purpose click on the ad and then you redirect it to infected link to infected page. Again, without any like, understanding that this page is infected, you just click on the ad or inside the freemium application. So again, uh, try to install really reliable applications, nice, important, important for you from reliable sources. Number three, do not copy all this uh, APK, uh, like all those data from different kinds of devices. You need to have your own device, your own application, and not to simply copy paste it from every anywhere else. Um, uh, what else? Uh, as always, like as the same as for PC, use uh, strong passwords for any kind of uh, services and applications. If it's like uh, um, mobile banking, if it's even some gaming, use some kind of not a simple password but stronger password. Um, Last but not least, do not jailbreak your device, of course. Uh, then uh, update the software, the main uh, operation system software regularly. When you see there is an update, it means you need to install it because mm -hmm. the new version, uh, it's much more, like, should be much more protected. And last but not least, use your common sense, like think. Think before doing something on your device. 
um, and be aware. Think and be aware. Uh, last but not least, um, like because this topic is also important, even before common sense, is Wi-Fi, of course. So um, here I want to say that Wi-Fi is everywhere, in, in cafeterias, in restaurants, in the hotels, in airports, uh, in the shops sometimes. So it's a public Wi-Fi, which means, again, that if it is public Wi-Fi, you can't trust because close to you on the other table can sit another person who can sniff the traffic easily. Again, nobody knows what is the access point, who, who, whom does it belong to. And again, it can be sniffed on the access point, it can be sniffed by another personality sitting close to you. So when you are using public open Wi-Fi, uh, maybe it's better not to leave any kind of sensitive private information. I mean, uh, your accounts and passwords, or again, banking, financial information, not to buy anything using public Wi-Fi. Better to do it at home or at the office using your own trusted Wi-Fi network. Uh, and uh, another simple advice is VPN, of course. You use VPN means it's encrypted, it's much more protected than like just the simple plain text messages uh, or browsing you're doing in open Wi-Fi. Okay. So you talked about using strong passwords. There's been a lot of talk about fingerprint sensors replacing passwords on phones. There have been, especially in India where, you know, there are phones that cost 10,000 rupees that come with a fingerprint sensor. How, how secure exactly is a fingerprint sensor? It is secured. It is secured. It's really complicated to bypass this fingerprinting uh, security. Um, but still, what, what I can recommend here, use that for as many applications as possible. And better to use two-factor authentication. Like I know that many, already many banks and many online mm. payment transaction systems are already using it. But if it's not, better to push them, to ask them to implement this. Uh, so two-factor authentication, I mean like um, uh, password and some SMS messages which are you need to proof and uh, input the short password together with uh, some login and uh, uh, fingerprint. So we've heard of uh, security threats increasing in India recently. What is your take on it? Is India really uh, not secure in terms of the mobile traffic that is coming and the data that is being shared? If we are talking about uh, just uh, simple PC malware, it's very stable. Uh, like during the last couple of years, yeah, based on our statistics, Kaspersky Security Network, India is like always uh, between 25 and 30 places or like among all the countries globally with the percentage, uh, if we're talking about web threats, online threats, with the percentage of infected users about 20 to 25%. Uh, but if we are talking about mobile threats, the situation is a little bit worse. And um, again, based on the fact which we already discussed that the number of users is hugely increasing, devices are affordable, the awareness level is not appropriate, um, the number of threats and the number of incidents in India of mobile threats is also increasing. And here, you are always like in t definitely in top 10 countries, sometimes in top 5 countries, where the, the infection percentage is about 10 to 15 uh, percent of infected devices. Uh, so this figure is always like increasing in terms of India, unfortunately, again, the, um, because of the number of users and the number of awareness, the level of awareness. So can an infected device, if I have an infected device, can that device affect my entire family even if I do not have any data that is, you know, that is related to them on my phone? Uh, can it still affect my family considering that we all connect to the same network? And It's a good question in terms of, again, many people, it's a perception, many people say, even with PCs, but more often with mobile devices as well. I don't care because I do not have any sensitive information. I don't do any kind of online banking, mobile banking, shopping whatsoever. I don't have any private stuff. So I really do not care whether my device is infected or not. Why should I spend money or whatever, install 
any kind of AV security application whatsoever. The reality is, this is always happens, and uh, this is about, let me call it social responsibility. Even if you do not have anything on, on your device, like anything, you just use it for phone calls. But your device is infected with some kind of a backdoor or a Trojan, whatever. You can still, as we discussed, make, be a part of a botnet, be a part of a zombie network, and send DDoS, send spam, send other pieces of malware to your family members, to your friends, to people who, are, who you're communicating with very easily. This is what always happens. So, again, even if you are like have nothing to, to lose, nothing to uh, have nothing on your device, but you need to be at least let's try to be socially responsible, not to be like a provider for uh, propagating any kind of malware or any other threats. A thing that people often say is they open a website and they get a pop up saying, please install this app or you can install this app. Is this something that happens from the website side or is it, could it be because your phone is already infected or could it also be because of an ad network that is running on the network on the website which is doing this? Uh, it will not happen because of your device is infected. Your device is infected, you are like, you can be redirected, of course, you can be redirected to any kind of third party page. Uh, it's possible, many malware uh, has such functionality. But more often it's again a compromised site, compromised web page, and there is some like infected script is implemented in there, or again there is a phishing site, uh, you can click on the link and open not the real site but the phishing site and get infection or uh, get lose your credentials there. Uh, so it, it, can poss it can be possible. Uh, what is a good way to choose a VPN for users? So there are lots of VPNs that people usually go to the Play Store or the iOS Store and download a VPN. But then there are VPNs that piggyback off your network also, right? It, it lets somebody else also use your uh, IP. So how exactly does a person make sure that the VPN he is choosing is trustworthy? Because your data then is definitely, when you're running a VPN, there's always something in between that is able to monitor your data, right? Um, Got it. Maybe I'm not that competent to um, to give some kind of an evaluation or expert estimation of which VPN is good, which VPN is bad. Uh, so the best answer here will be if you do really care about what kind of VPN you're using, and this is important to be care of, uh, simply go to any kind of reviews pages, and there are a lot of reviews a lot of reviews and the rating of different VPNs. Again, I, I, I can't like promote any kind of solution or service here, but definitely if you like go to any media publications, you easily can find a rating of different VPN solutions. Uh, keep in mind that nothing can be free, so the best solutions cost you money. Uh, be prepared for it. What are the most common threats that you've seen in India that are affecting users? Uh, good question. Uh, if we're talking about like the most common uh, threats in terms of mobile users. Yeah, mobile users. Um, it's still some Trojans which are like stealing information most in most cases. Uh, if I don't like have a, I don't have an exact numbers at the moment, but uh, again, if you're interested, I'm pretty sure that we can provide this information later on and you can use it on your uh, resource desk with some kind of statistics, the most used uh, uh, pieces of malware in India. Um, but in my like, perspective, it's like simple Trojans which are stealing information from the device. Okay. okay. So you recently spoke about uh, APT attacks that are increasing in India. Could you? Explain that to the viewers a little bit. Uh, concerning APT attacks, 
Uh, it's the, as, absolutely different topic. It's not maybe related and uh, touches um, the simple consumers because it's absolutely different level. But in terms of, again, the awareness and in terms of the understanding what's happening globally in the threat landscape, it's very important at least to mention it. So uh, from our opinion, APT, Advanced Persistent Threats, Targeted Attacks, is like the main trend today. So more and more cyber criminals, malware writers are focusing on, on the cyber espionage campaigns, stealing information from corporations, from government, from big enterprises, financial organizations, and so on and so forth. So th this is what we see as a trend today. And uh, the number of those threats uh, is increasing. The number, the level of sophistication, how complicated they are, is also increasing. The um, problem here is how to detect, how to find out that you are compromised by any kind of APT. And uh, it happens also in India. More and more such uh, targets and victims are uh, based in India. Uh, so it's again different actors, different cyber groups which are doing it. But it happens more and more often in India with many examples like Equation, Dark Hotel, some famous APT attacks, Regen, Turla, uh, Cloud Atlas, and so on and so forth. Uh, lastly, so I have uh, I've talked to a lot of uh, people who are into hacking. I have, a f I have friends who hack and they've told me often that from the time that people have been hearing about hacking, so hacking used to be this really complicated thing and people would think of code and they would think, oh, this is something only genius savants can do. But they explain now that it's much easier to hack into somebody's existing, uh, somebody's PC or network if they're not secure. Could you explain what over the, say, the last five years has come over hacking where even somebody like me can use a small few tools and hack into somebody's network who is absolutely not secure? You know, uh, unfortunately, and the reality is that it's really easy. Uh, based on the fact that uh, there are a lot of source codes on the network, uh, with for malicious software, so you don't need to be even a programmer, unfortunately. And I'm not. I'm uh, again. I'm not going to advertise it or like uh, give some advices here. But just for your understanding and uh, understanding the reality. Again, you don't need to have like special skills or some kind of fantastic knowledge. You just need to find uh, browse and find those kind of software and uh, use it for yourself, which is not that difficult. Uh, sometimes, again, it costs money. But what I'm trying uh, to deliver, what we're trying to tell, uh, for example, to young generation, is that, in my opinion, uh, in our opinion, there are like two, two ways. You can choose like the, the positive way and the light way, and you can choose the negative and dark way. And uh, if you are, like a junior, young generation specialist, a programmer, it's, m believe me, it's much more interesting and much more profitable sometimes. And uh, let's say reliable to be on this uh, positive side and to develop some really useful tools and to implement your knowledge and experience into some, like a creation way uh, and it will be sometimes profitable, but really risky and uh, um, with really negative end. It's sometimes terrible f for going to this dark direction. So be careful, think again, think before doing something bad and uh, be aware that law enforcement in every region, in every country, are uh, doing better and better in terms of fighting cyber criminals and uh, malware writers. Thanks a lot, Sergey. Thank you. So there you have it, Sergey Novikov's tips on what you're supposed to do to ensure mobile security and the fact that mobile security is very important in a market like India.